this week on uh, Mavericks of Montana. We're chugging the legal dose of caffeine, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so grab yourself some Red Bull, saddle up. I didn't drink the first one. What are you asking? I you got this one. You got that one? Are you at four? It's half full. Uh, this is five. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my goodness. Cheers. We did this like a bunch Red Bull gives you wings. I like how we do it at night. In the morning. I can at least sleep tonight. That's not happening. Ah, Damn it. I get it. Wait, what? Oh. Yeah. Uh, nice. I understand. I'm feeling the symptom one kicking in. Frequent urination. (laughs) Cool. Other symptoms include (laughs) dizziness, jitteriness, um, anxiety. Trying to think what else. I just looked him up. Heartbeat. Rapid heartbeat. Oh, rapid heartbeat. Yeah, that's a big one. A lot of people get heart attacks if they go over the legal limit, so hopefully... Uh, nice. You guys seen happen. that video of the dude, and he drinks a bunch, and his heart is literally like... Lay out of his out chest, of bro. He, yeah. I'm pretty sure he crazy. died. That was most... Sometimes yeah. mine does that without, like... See, that was kind of like... like yes, we, no, not like out of my chest, but like... That's when practice, I remember Alex looking just like pointing at my chest, just like, what the fuck is that? It was like twitching, it was like my heartbeat. See, it like through my chest. Oh, that's weird. That's scary. That's Rise in body temperature. So yeah, I think... What I'm feeling at least is like my body's getting warmer, but my hands and feet are getting colder. Yeah. And my feet are so cold. I'm about to start sweating right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, Dude, I'm it, really warm. <laughs> you're like, also wearing it's like, circulation. You're wearing like 14. More than 14. You're wearing a lot of layers. So. Layers. Uh, ogres. Ogres <laughs> have layers. layers like an onion. <laughs> Each one of these bad boys has <coughs> 80, gram, 80 milligrams of caffeine. FDA recommends you should not go over 400 milligrams of caffeine in a day, 24 hours. Most people drink two cups of coffee in the morning and then steadily, you know, coffee out for the whole morning. Each cup of coffee has about 40 milligrams. So if you drink two cups of coffee, you're basically drinking a Red Bull. And some people... Some people put Red Bull in their coffee. Really? Yeah. It tastes bad. Never Have you done it before? No, it's uh, it would taste bad. Oh. I don't know. Never Those Red Bull... Uh, Sizzlers or whatever they call them, sparklers. They sell them at coffee shops. Oh, sell. the Red Bull infusions. Ch- the, the Chargers. The Chargers. They yeah, they have many names. But they're those they're have really like good. 110 milligrams. Of, oh my goodness. Of caffeine and then sugar on top of that. Sugar is another thing. Sugar and pop, or high two frost corn syrup. Sugar and you know energy drinks. Wait, before we go far, introduce the, the topic. Okay, we got the matter oh. here. The topic? Yeah. Okay, so today we'll be discussing caffeine and caffeine in society, caffeine, well not... Drugs in society. Drugs in society, drugs economically, drugs um, mentally and then what they do to your inhibitions and how how it works in a society. And uh, with me today is Cade Nolson, introductory maverick. How did you Logan Weisenbaugh, Caleb Johnson. He came all the way from Bozeman to be with us here today. Yes, sir. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm. Gotta I'm, do what you gotta do, man. I'm, that's number three for me, so I'm gonna chug this one real fast. It takes about 20 minutes to set in, usually, so they recommend when you wake up in the morning. Crazy. The first thing you do when you wake up in the morning as an adult, you start the coffee maker. And then my mom, when she uh, makes coffee, she goes back to bed and it comes back later. And uh, <laughs> after she started it, drinks a cup of coffee, then goes back. I don't know if she goes back to bed, but she like waits for it to kick in. It takes about 20 minutes. And that's for caffeine across the board, no matter what you drink. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Starting to speak a little fast there. But we've, <laughs> believe, <laughs> a little but fast we've, there. we've been drinking since the last like 40 minutes. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> as you can see, it's kind of speeding me up a little bit already. Oh. I feel like you'd be an auctioneer. Yeah, I couldn't get another 40 minutes. Logan's trying so hard to get So, to the man in the brave, any with the jittery legs. <laughs> 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 It also speeds up your brain power, and that's like people in the business world and jobs and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it increases mental activity, is what I'm trying to say. And, you know, it accesses more parts of your brain. And I think another drug that you do that, you see do that a lot, is uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. And it does a lot differently. It helps. Like you're sick of pain. I don't know. Never. Looked into that one, done research on that one, but <laughs> marijuana increases brain activity. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's all chemicals. All drugs are just 
adding or stimulating chemicals in your brain like marijuana, dope, food called dope that comes from dopamine. It secretes dopamine into the brain and it tricks your neurons into producing dopamine and like um, it just makes your brain capacity go up. So it's not really, a lot of people say it's unnatural to do drugs, but really you're just adding something to the brain that's already there. Do you just, think when you do that, it unlock, like, you know how they say we only use 10% of our brain? That's cells? what I was, yeah. Like, you, you think it like, unlocks, like, that's that extra mind. 10% or whatever? Whatever it is. That's my personal opinion, is that it, it activates more than we use. And I don't know if there's science behind that, but it definitely has an impact on the brain of neurons and stuff like that. But, um... Yeah, caffeine does that as well. Another aspect, kind of on the other side of it, is melatonin. People use mm-hmm. that to go to sleep. NyQuil, all that stuff. It helps yeah. slow down the brain. Melatonin is a chemical in your body that blocks um, adrenaline. Adrenaline is a big one too with drugs. This, this is injecting us with adrenaline right now. Straight mm-hmm. up. It's like an adrenaline too. That's part For of your sure. body. When you're like skiing <laughs> and stuff like that, you get an adrenaline rush. That's a natural... Response. So, so this is an unnatural way to get a natural response. And um, melatonin, as I was saying, it it blocks that. So you're basically putting your body into like this drowsy state. And that's a drug in a sense. I mean, people use that, sleeping pills, all that stuff. Same thing with like uh, people who are addicted to uh, pharmaceuticals. They're... Before they get the addiction uh, chemicals and part of that, they get the slow down, drowsiness, you know, grogginess, all that stuff. And I mean, that's addictions wise, that's probably the, the world's um, largest and most like socially ignored uh, addiction is pharmaceuticals, you know, cabinets. Every time you go to get a prescription, they give you the pill bottle pills. Yeah. Yeah. They give you. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm trying to say here. Come on. They give you way more than you need. And yeah, I have like 30 hydro sitting inside. Hydro. Hydrocodone. 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 Yeah. That's what it is. From my wisdom teeth surgery. That was like two years ago. I got a shit ton of those too. I know. And they don't go bad over time. They don't yeah, go bad. Yeah. You're supposed to return them, but nobody you're does. You're supposed to, yeah. You're supposed to either return, return them. Return them. You're, you're not supposed to flush them down the toilet. You're not supposed to throw them away. It's like a present. You're not supposed to sell them. Well, <laughs> that's right. what I was about to get. Into, <laughs> yeah. So you can't throw them away, and you don't want to take them. A lot of people do end up taking them from themselves, and they get addicted after major surgeries, stuff, stuff like that. But and then the other aspect of that is get dealers who sell them on the street, so people can get that rush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know after I uh, broke my wrist, I had like, it's like they give you like 40% of a bottle just full and then you only probably need about five of them. Yeah. I, I wonder what gets you addicted to the, like those kind of things because like, um, because, okay, so like weed gives you dope, like a rise in dopamine levels, right? Yeah. And like, you don't, you're not addicted to actual weed, you're addicted to that rise in dopamine, dopamine level, rush. like your, your to body's theory, reaction yeah. to that. So you're exactly. addicted to that. But like, with, like, hydros or something like that, whatever, like, it's a painkiller. So, like, are you just addicted to feeling numb? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of the like other... Like, you just... You don't feel it. melatonin stuff, that's kind of the other side of that. It's, like, the opposite of dopamine. Your brain is used to being having those things block. And when they come back, your brain feels the need to go back to that state. It's blocked. Um, melatonin is really screwed up. And people who use melatonin for sleep should really try and wean off of it because... There's stories of people, there's this uh, actress from Roseanne, she was, uh, she was on the sitcom for like 20 years, and then when the whole like uh, Black Lives Matter stuff, Me Too movement came out where people were like trying to cancel people for being racist, she went on Twitter at 2 a.m. in the morning and said something about this chick that she was on the TV with was black when she was really Egyptian, but she has no recollection of doing that, and her show got canceled and she got canceled, but she was on melatonin trying to sleep. So it, that's the bad part about all those, like all the pill drugs, is that like once you take a certain amount, you you get like a tolerance, a tolerance to it, and so yeah, you got to yeah, take more and more, and like you just you build like you're, you're just because just because your tolerance gets higher doesn't mean like the amount that it takes to overdose gets higher, you know? Yeah. So like eventually you're just gonna like overdose that's a, that's if you keep going too. with it. Yeah. Exactly. People will get heart attacks and stuff, but yeah, she her whole life got ruined 
down the drain because she was on melatonin. You guys know Kevin James, like Paul Bart Monk Club? Mm-hmm. He told Joe Rogan this story about how he uh, took a bunch of melatonin to go to sleep, and then he woke up the next morning with dirty dishes in the sink, food gone from the fridge, all his doors were locked. He didn't know what the hell happened. He thought someone broke in and cooked a meal in his house. But then he realized, in the middle of the night, he got up, fully awake, made himself a meal, cooked, sat down and ate, put the dishes in the sink, and then went back to bed. Had no recollection of it. Just from melatonin, just from a small chemical thing that. And it's crazy because you can just go to your local store and just buy yeah, it. You can buy it. Yeah, just the right, off the, right off the counter, right off the show. It's the thing with caffeine. I mean, the economic modalities of caffeine have a large or a large part of the uh, the, of the economic, you know, main staples of the United States market. I mean, you got Starbucks, a giant mogul. You got. All the coffee shops, you got all the coffee making, you got all the coffee makers, you got coffee, you got... Colombia's economy is mainly... Cocaine and coffee. Yeah, exactly. You know where they get coffee? The cocoa cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> cocoa bean, you know what so you can do with the cocoa bean? Okay. Makes them the purest cocaine in the world, and that's where it comes from, it's Colombia. And, you know, they're both... They live in... If you step back, there. if you step back from your, like... Everyone's kind of transcribed from when we were kids. We're educated to have a blind eye towards drugs. Don't do drugs. Don't mess with them. You do drugs, your life gets screwed up. But if you step out of that for just a second, bear with me. Step out of that. Say, oh, caffeine, cocaine, made from the same thing, made from the same plant. That's the part that they don't tell you in school. Is like they tell you like all these drugs are bad. Like stay away from weed, meth, like all 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 that shit. Uh-huh. But like the more addictive stuff is this. Yeah. Like this and like sugar, like not like natural sugar that like a plant would make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But because like, your, your, like yeah, your body, your body needs that. Your body needs natural. Your body needs natural sugar, but what's in these is artificial sugar, and that's that's addictive. That's, that's like the most. That's, I think it was like the thing that people are most addicted to. Yeah, is this, and we don't need it. It's yeah, not no. a requirement. For I watched this. Lifestyle. Yeah, I watched this. Uh, this video and this dude was like three years artificial sugar free and so for a week he uh went and ate out at all these places and whatever he ordered instead of eating that he would like figure out how much sugar is in each one and just like put it on a plate and show you and then he would eat the sugar like for a full thing of pizza it was oh. like a pound of sugar oh, oh. Yeah. like just artificial sugar like something you make cookies with same thing with food, too. Like, our body needs food. And, you know, the economy relies on people buying food and farmers producing food. But America is the most obese country in the world. And our number of people over, like, 250 pounds, like, skyrocketed. And, and we don't need that. People are addicted to that. It's in their brains to eat and buy and destroy a large amount of food. And you can see that in the economy, how it's... America's biggest economy in the world. It's also the biggest uh, consumer of fast food. food. McDonald's feeds literally like some like some crazy number of million people a day. Yeah. And they need so much. I listen to this thing where like there's like fifty percent of the chicken farming goes into fast food chicken production. Yeah. McChickens, you know, Popeyes, Chick Fil A, Popeyes, Chick Fil A. KFC, all that stuff. It's all so bad. Addiction, it's crazy how much addiction ties into the economy. And there's this thing called elastic and inelastic products. Elastic products are things where there's substitutes and other options, so you don't need to buy that, so the economy doesn't need that to grow. So, like, an example would be if Miracle Whip gets more expensive, people buy mayonnaise. But inelastic things like gasoline, the price goes up, Government puts a tax on it, price goes up, but people still buy gas. Look at cigarettes. They're trying to get people to quit cigarettes in the 90s. They put like a $2 tax on every pack of cigarettes. People still bought cigarettes. And the tobacco industry boomed. And then they came out with the anti, like, the tobacco industry funded the research that goes into how people quitting cigarettes. So they controlled the whole market. It's crazy because, like, you don't even know that you're addicted until you know you're addicted. If, if that makes any sense, like... No, no, it definitely makes like, sense. Do you get what I'm saying, though? Like, like, like the company Jewel, like, how they stay like, yeah, like, skyrocketing. You just, you just do it for so long, and then, like, you, 
you're like, oh, I can stop whenever I want. You, you, you stop for like a day, and you're like, dude, I, you get I really feeling. miss it that. Your, I'm craving you get that. mood swings. Like this last thing will just affect your mood. And you think like, yeah. I need this. I'll calm down. I like, need you, this. Like, yeah, you, you don't. You, you don't know. In your brain. Yeah, you don't know you're addicted until you're addicted. Like you'll 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 know, but you. You'll really just, know like, just when you have to you. go through the withdrawals if you like, decide to quit. Yeah. Yeah, all that nicotine stuff too, and that can like, like after cigarettes, kind of the only way to stop like inelastic booms like that is by putting on like a smear campaign. It's like doing the whole smear campaign, and then restrictions like you can't smoke in government building, you can't smoke out. So people quit smoking, and that kind of went down a little bit. But then Jewel came up. It's literally just started within a year. Boom. Way above anything else. For young people too. So the thing with cigarettes in the fifties. I know exactly. You know what it is? It's uh, they definitely attack the younger audience for that coming out with all those flavors. That campaign flavors. Yeah, they definitely target more of a younger audience for that too. With the, all it's the not even flavors even if stuff. you don't look at the health factors. Ignore all the health factors. Just look at the timeline. And they the cigarettes do came out in the fifties. Boom, teenagers. Boom. And then cigarettes too. And then you go look at Jewel when it came out in like 2017 or whatever. Boom. Young audiences, jewels. But then, you know, obviously, with that, Jewel got sued, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's all, they have the money to afford it. Yeah, it doesn't even matter at that yeah. point. And with those government restrictions, those don't work either. Um, uh, and it does absolutely nothing. No, and a good example of that is they outlawed, or drugs have been illegal economically. The government can't sell, the government shuts down, you get the copy drugs, you go to jail. The government tries to put their fingers in things, put their fingers all over the economy, in our mixed market economy. Drugs are illegal, weed is illegal. Well, people still do drugs, people are stealing drugs, drugs are on the street. The thing is, if they, they got really... kicked out of the main economy, so they built this whole black market economy. The money's still there, everything's still there, it's still working in the system. They can't stop people. It's like it's like, I don't know I don't know what decade it was, but you remember when they had that they, they did the alcohol ban in America? Prohibition in the thirties. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. people were just making underground the bars. Got, yeah, uh, the government got rid of alcohol, but it's still people, we, rose up people are still able to do it. You, you can't stop it. nothing they can do to stop it. Yeah, you can't stop the economic side of it, the economic modalities, and you also can't stop the people. So people are always gonna find a way. People that are addicted, they're always gonna find a way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They will Socially, always find a way. It's always there. Mm-hmm. Can't stop the economic, and they can't gonna, stop the social. The thing is, once they put the ban on it, it's just going to make people that you know are addicted like that to do it more, and then it's going to branch. Yeah. And then it's almost, it almost gives it a feeling of like, you know, I'm doing something bad. Like a rush. Yeah. What's yeah, crazy it makes is, it worse. What's crazy is, uh, well, everyone's addicted to something, but like, they don't know. not everyone thinks they're addicted to it because it's not like a bad thing, I guess. like. Like, you know, like, you could be... You can still be successful. Yeah, you could be addicted, addicted to going to the gym. Like, that's not a bad thing. No, there's like, certain... Like, you could also be addicted to, like, you know? something that, that doesn't... They don't, like, advertise it as harmful. You Exhibit know? A. Yeah, they don't <laughs> advertise society, it as harmful, yeah, but everyone's, everyone's addicted, addicted to, to it. it. But everyone's they're still successful technology. people. People, yeah. 99% of people have a cell phone addiction, and 99% of people have successful, healthy lifestyles. And, you know, people spend hours and hours a day on the phone... People who do cigarettes, smoke weed, all that stuff, they still are successful. And it's sick though. It's yeah, exactly. You just can't you just can't let that addiction consume your life. Yeah. You can't you let know, it control. You gotta, you gotta you know moderation. It's gonna help add to your life. You yeah. Can't decrease from your life. You can't let it yeah, you can't let it control A lot of people can't see that. And they also can't see that if you step back and forget about all the things you know about drugs. You think just think. If you had the your phone and then a little tiny pile of cocaine. It's the same thing. Mentally, it's the same thing. It's an addiction. And a lot of people say, once you start doing those hard drugs, your life's gonna go down the drain. But as we were saying, we can either take the positive side of it or the negative side of it. And I don't know the numbers, I don't know the stats of all the like, the hip, uh, the homeless people and all that stuff who are addicted to drugs. If when they started doing drugs in life, they went down the toilet. But I think in a perfect society, in a utopia, I don't know if this would happen or not in real life, the government legalized all drugs, we could have. Just, no. Let's keep her going. Keep her rolling. Red Bull. There's nothing over here. Do we drink them all? There's no way. Where do we go? Come on, Bell. That's what we can drink. We can't go out. We got pop. Diet, like a quarter. Yeah.
Oh, okay. <laughs> See, as, no, no, as we're talking about... Is you still going, Kate? Yep, we're still rolling. Getting, getting used to the new setup, the new studio. This is a temporary studio, but I think it's pretty good. But as I was saying, let's think about this. What if our government legalized all drugs and had regulations on them, just like what they're doing with weed? Lower. Like Oregon. Lower. Oregon just legalized everything. Yeah. I, we don't know what's going to happen, but I think in a perfect society, all drugs would be legal. It would be a libertarian government, which I, my, I, I personally stand politically as a libertarian, where government intervention should just be way smaller and way scaled back than it is now. But if as a society we legalize drugs, the government could have regulations on them, so you look at things like ODs from um, drugs that are laced. The government could tell you your legal amount, just like how we have a legal amount of caffeine today. And, you know, like in Oregon, what they did with shrooms was, if you want to get them legally, you can go into this place. I don't know if this is true, but I heard this where they like, they take you through the experience. And it's therapeutic. Like they're doing therapeutic. That's kind of cool. That's Therapeutic trips for like vets and stuff who uh, have PTSD and they kind of guide them through it with like a, a guru or something like that. But it's a, like a doctor, you know, it's like. In a controlled environment. A high so doctor. instead of being in this black, scary, dark market on the street where you could get shot, it's in a careful controlled environment. Controlled, careful, free environment. See, I think that's a good way to do it. I think in a perfect system, that's like, what it would be. I, I think that if it's in a controlled environment, how, how bad could it be? It. Like, I mean, I'm not saying like meth in a controlled environment would still be good because you've seen how like that destroys your body, destroys your whole life. But like something like, that's like shrooms some that you can get like. I don't know. I don't we know. Do, we don't know. There's I don't know no about it. It's a psychedelic. That's, the thing is, is there's drug. no science that goes into this. Is it this. like a natural drug, though? Like, you what? just pick it out shrooms? out of the forest or what? Shrooms? Yeah. I've heard. Well, I don't know. It is. There's psychedelic no, I've mushrooms. Heard shrooms. Psilocybin mushrooms grow in the wild in some places. I've heard that most shrooms that people get are literally just like, it's like, like cow. Like cow shit. Like cow shit. Cow shit? You, just fuck it. you literally just flip it over after it sits there for a while, and it's literally it's like psychedelic shroom. Right there. That's disgusting. It's it, the chemical is psilocybin, and there's mushrooms that have psilocybin in like rainforest and stuff that, um, like these tribes that have no access to the outside world. They it's part of their like you hear about Indians and their Native American stuff. How they in like third world countries they they go on their nature quest or whatever. Yeah, they go on their nature quest or like they're like I'm trying to think of the word, but. I wasn't trying it's to part of their rituals. It's part of their... Right there. It's part of their... Um, I think it came off that way. It's part of their... Yeah. Their religion is to go on these trips. I don't know if that's the right word, but... Their that's journeys. a control environment. And, like, find themselves. It's their way to, like, find themselves, I guess is what I would say. <sighs> and there's no science that goes into drugs. I mean, it's, it's socially unacceptable. So, like, when the whole weed thing came out, everyone thought everyone was going to die of... Weed overdose, but you can't overdose, and they did science can't on that. And nobody knows a lot of history about this weed, but I watched this documentary on YouTube called, uh, not on YouTube, on Netflix. And in the 20s, weed wasn't legal, but it was much less regulated than it is now. So, like, jazz, all the jazz musicians, they were, um, they called it reefer back then, that was the name. All the jazz cats and all that stuff, they were reefers, they were on the reefer. Louis Armstrong, he got arrested in, uh, St. Louis, I think, for smoking a joint after a gig. And he was, you know, one of the biggest music talents in history. And, you know, rock and roll wouldn't be here today without Louis Armstrong. Jazz wouldn't be as good as it is. The song, What a Wonderful World, just sang with a few stone when you recorded that. <laughs> <laughs> it could be possible. So, and then, like, you have these... Um, pseudoscience things that come out with drugs too and I think that's a lot of what they teach us at school is all pseudoscience like I remember in 7th grade you guys know what pseudoscience is it's bullshit uh, science so it's sure doctors that say we don't kill you oh uh, like the the, the scare te- like a like a parent telling you like uh, what do they oh like like popping your fingers or like yeah stuff like that, that that just annoys them it'll like hurt you in the long run or whatever it'll give you a Arthritis. That's yeah. pseudoscience. I've heard them telling me my knuckles are big like golf balls. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's all pseudoscience. And it's just because they, they, they get like, annoyed by it. It's kind of like scientific proof. I mean, not, it's impossible. Like, it's like popping their knuckles. 
Oh, or, like, or like coffee Central Grove. I used to drink a lot of coffee as a kid, and I'm 6'3 now, so I don't, yeah. I don't think it really affects you. I don't, I don't think... Sitting in front of a TV or burning your eyes out. Does. That's science. Lifting does stunt your growth in a way. Lifting and like... Premature lifting, like before you or get like a growth gymnast, spurt. Or like gymnasts, the reason they're also short is because of like all that constant pounding on the ground. Well, yeah, like premature lifting like before you get like puberty like definitely affects your growth. So like all that sugar, yeah, drinking yeah, sugar your, and caffeine, all that doesn't. definitely doesn't because as a kid, I used to drink a lot, like a lot of soda and stuff. And like I'm 6'2 now, so like yeah. definitely didn't work. I think that when you lift as a kid, it messes with your testosterone levels because your, that does that your brain too, hasn't yeah. been set in with your testosterone yet. So that, but yeah. all that pseudoscience stuff, that has a big hand like, in drugs have too. Have you guys uh, seen Tristan Lee? No. He's a 14-year-old soccer player. He's like, I think he's like 5'2", and he's just like ripped. That's crazy. And he's like 14, 16, somewhere in the room. I would never like, give up height for... Yeah, he's for uh, he's muscle, he's addicted to. He is. Big. He is. He's, he's addicted lifted. to the gym, which he's isn't necessarily a bad thing. He's with like Bradley Martin, the Knock Boys. Uh, uh, he put his whole life into being big. Yeah. yeah, he really has. Yeah, but all that pseudoscience stuff, I think that has a big hand in drugs too. Like, I remember um, a certain resource officer from Ferguson. I won't say his name, but he did this presentation when we were in junior high in Mr. Armstrong's class. I said his name because he's a cool guy, but. Um, <laughs> he's, not the he's officer up, the officer I won't say his name but uh, he was uh, up in front of the class and there was a presentation on drugs and he was saying if you smoke weed you will become addicted right away <laughs> first, <laughs> first, time, first day you will, the first day you will do one bowl second day two bowls third day you will be up to three bowls <laughs> fourth day two joints a day you will be addicted and then three joints and then a bong hit and then three bong hits by the time you know it, you're spending all your money on weed Life's down the drain. It's a gateway drug. Once you get addicted to weed, you'll start doing other drugs. Your mind will be naturally addicted to drugs. They all say it's a gateway drug, but I know a lot of stoners that only smoke weed and they have not tried anything else. Yeah, it's serious. Because they like, they like pound into your head more than like weed or like any of that stuff. They pound in your head like meth, uh, coke. Well, I uh, think it's because we're from Montana. Speed. They, they, well, they like pound in your head that all like those like three or four main like those ones are, like, the really, really bad ones. And, like, I don't know. I would say I, I'd agree because that's what I was taught as a kid. Yeah. I was also taught weed's bad. But, like, yeah. looking at it now, I don't I don't know, it's like, if it's a terrible, terrible there thing. There is no real science behind that stuff because doctors won't risk their careers and their livelihoods taking in that bad stuff because they will be society, like... Yeah, they will always tell you the They'll be thing. shrugged off. And then so the only science that's been done is the bad science. And all the statistics and stuff about all the drug addicts and all that stuff is put on from a negative standpoint. So we don't know. We honestly don't know. We don't know what the aspects are. We don't know what would happen if drugs were legal. But I think from the drugs we do know and the science we do have, we know that caffeine can get you screwed up, all jittery and all that stuff. And we just drank four Red Bulls. And we're feeling it a little bit. It's a, it's a proven fact that we are effed up right now, but we're still going on with our daily lives. We're still going to have a future. We're not going to be hobos tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to throw our Same lives thing away with nicotine. Red Bull. Still be poor, People have you know, slight addictions to nicotine. So I think if all drugs are legal, I'd say 80% of the population wouldn't even... I'd say it's about 60% of the population wouldn't even mess with it. And then the forty percent of people who do mess with it, thirty percent of them would probably be normal people. Do you, do you think that like weed can be like an actual like everyone says it like you can't get addicted to weed, right? Yeah, you definitely. Can. Do you, do you think you can? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, you definitely can I mean, because people like everyone the like feeling. makes lame excuses for it. They're like you 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 don't get addicted to the actual thing. You get addicted to the dopamine the the dopamine levels that increase in your body. I'm like. Well, that's like the weed that's doing that to you. Well, yeah, because so like, they get addicted. Like, to if that's the feeling. only way to increase your dopamine sure levels, if it's they get addicted to the feeling. A bad thing, though. I think the only thing that's a bad thing about it is people who do that. People who are still in suit, smoke, and then just be lazy and yeah, that, just don't do anything. And that's like anything. all they yeah. do. Just ruin their lives with it. But if you look at stoners who have done successful stuff, like, Joe Rogan, Snoop Dogg. There's a reason it's becoming like a medical, medical marijuana. 
Yeah, exactly. There's benefits to it. Exactly. So I think if people were given the choice There's between the positive aspects of it and the negative aspects of all drugs. You think it's positive people, people, people who want positive lives, people who want good lives Definitely. will choose the positive side of it. I think t- tomorrow, what makes more sense? If tomorrow the government released all bans on drugs and regulated drugs, society would fail. No. There's no way we'd let this system fail. There's no because way not everyone's going to go out and do them still. No, exactly. And I'm not saying, like, the people who are going to go out and do them are going to be, like, losers, you know? Just I'm just saying, like, like, like... But in a society, there's always going to be some of the people that are just losers. Yeah. There's always going to be the homeless people. There's always going to be the lazy people. There's always going to be the lazy There's stoners. nothing you can do about it, yeah. yeah. There's always going to be those There's people. always going to be the people, you know, that, that can still go, go on with go their life. Go do lives. something. They can still go on with their lives. Be successful lives. people. Yeah. And there's successful people that are stoners. Like, think about... Think about a... Uh, guy who owns Tesla. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Elon Musk. There's a video of him smoking pot on Joe Rogan's podcast. <laughs> exactly. He's one of the he's, most successful he's the, ri- he's the, the richest person in the world. He just passed Jeff Bezos. Yeah. He did? Yeah. Jeff Bezos uh, stepped down as the CEO of Amazon. He's not, he the, the, he's not the owner anymore? No, he stepped down. Yeah, no, Elon oh, Musk yeah. passed Jeff, he's Jeff now, Bezos. He's which now, is like a little bit over $100 billion. He says he doesn't do it on a regular basis, though, but he, he definitely does. He doesn't hate it. I mean, he said I he mean who, who cares if he does it on a okay. regular basis? He's obviously like, the most tell, successful person in the world. Him, no, I mean, he he's done it and no. he's the biggest man in the world. And what's crazy is, like, okay, Bill Gates started Microsoft way back when, right? And yeah. he was he was the richest garage. person for, for a while. He's and still then, one of the richest people. He's, like, the third, I'm pretty sure, which is still props yeah. to him. That's awesome. And then Jeff Bezos comes out, and then Elon Musk does it in, like, less than 10 years. In like half the amount of time the other yeah, two guys did it, and he, and he smokes it's from weed. The same thing too. I mean, like it's, you can be, they you all got rich from the same Yeah, you can yeah. choose to do something with your life, and like then those are there's are people that are like just they don't have any goals or ambitions. They just do it because kinda, they like it. That kind of goes into what I'm trying to say with the political aspect of it too. Because I stand as a libertarian, and as a libertarian, I think that people should have the liberty and the freedoms to make the choices they want to make with their lives without government intervention. And if you look at it from a liberal standpoint, extreme liberal, government should have a hand in health care. Government has a hand in welfare. Uh, not liberal. Uh, what's the... Not Russian... Socialism. Communist? Socialism. Oh. Or communism. Government gives them food. Government gives them jobs. Government gives them powers. They're all their utilities. And I don't agree with that. So, I mean, in a libertarian society, all drugs would be legal. And people would have people the choice to do it. Is from society. Exactly. Like, yeah. that's the like it, on paper, that's the perfect society, but like it doesn't work. It's never worked. That's been a proven fact. You because at, not everyone's the, the same. Soviet person. Union. You look at North Korea. You look at China. All those. Yes, everyone. They have, everyone they have no freedom. No freedom. They have, they have no freedom. They can't use social media. They can't watch TV. The government controls their news media. The government controls their money. The government controls their kids. They can have like yeah. China. They used to kill off your kids if you had more. Yeah. Money. Well, you, they still. They, they still, still do. They that. only have one child. They don't kill no, them off. They, they change that. I thought Did it was they? like two, uh, yeah. two or three. No, they're, they're, they're like uh, promoting oh. children because they they did that for like I don't know how long, like ten years or something, and then they realized like so we're, not gonna have, we're not going to have any kids. Like we're not going to have a next generation. Really? Yeah, we're going to have like such a small population. So now they're promoting because it like kind of like years, it, way it, of if you think about that, that cuts your population in half because it takes two to make one. Yeah, but we're not, I'm not necessarily saying it's a so, good thing. Like, don't do that. It's like, if it's illegal there, then obviously, like, don't, you know, so they don't kill your kid. Yeah. But Yeah, so for me, from the libertarian aspect, I think if we had, life is about choices, that's what my dad always tells me. And you still could have the choice, and you'd have even more freedom than you would have now, even for getting the drug aspect, if we went to a libertarian government, everyone would have freedom to do everything. I mean, that's how the country, that's how our country started was, you know, freedom of speech, Second Amendment, and all that stuff. But we've gone so far from that now that we're not even close to even a republic. I mean, even with like the Trump administration, there's just stuff you can't do. You can't post on social media, you get blocked, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, you almost can't like have your own opinion now. Yeah. No, especially get online. Canceled. Yeah. Like, what we were canceled. talking about earlier, Morgan Whalen. Yeah. Morgan Wallen. Think about him for a second. Uh, is it Morgan Wallen? It's yeah. not bringing this up on, on here. Well, we don't. I'm just saying. I'm just saying he got look, canceled. Yeah, just look at him, for example. You know, well, look at for, Ro- Ro- Roseanne I was talking about earlier. She got canceled. Her whole career was ruined because she said something. She got canceled socially and from the, you know. Just, uh, you look at uh, Twitter. They got rid of Trump's account. Blocked mm-hmm. off all Did you see accounts. he made a fake one? Did he? Yeah, it's, it's funny. He, he, like, used a fake name and everything. And, like, he just photoshopped a mustache on his face. <laughs> <laughs> 
He said definitely, <laughs> his bio is like definitely not the 45th president of the United States. <laughs> oh, boy. That's funny. But I mean, that's kind of crazy. Oh, the most powerful commander uh, in chief in the United States at the time could be cut off. That really, that easy. That, that really, that really proves that we're not a libertarian government. That's yeah. for sure. We're does not that, a public. Does that like, does that really, like, okay, so we say the president's the most powerful person, but, like, look at that what happened to him. Not. He just got, like, silenced by, some, like, a, C- silenced a CEO. So, like, out. Does, does the government run our country, or is it all the big, C like, corporations and I think companies? what it is now is mostly our government. When you look at back in the 60s and stuff before social media and all that, who ran, I mean, look at JFK, a lot of people think the mob killed him. And I think back then the mob had stuff dirt on politicians and stuff and they kind of control the strength from behind the scenes but now with technology I think it's definitely the corporations and the big wigs that control everything mm-hmm. I mean they have their hand in everything they have all the money and the money you look at the money that's where the power goes I mean they their societal overreach reaches out I mean they didn't like Donald Trump they never liked him they did everything they could to get him out of there mm-hmm. they impeached they, him they once they tried him. to impeach him again they bashed him on social media they controlled the media they all had the government control over everything. And I don't think that's good. I think in a perfect society, we would have grounds to do everything. We'd have perfect freedom. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think drugs are a big aspect of that. Because I think society would prosper. Because, I mean, there's people who would not be the same place they were without today if they didn't, if they weren't stoners. Yeah, if they didn't have coffee in the morning. They might like sneak They didn't out. have a donut. If they didn't have a donut in the morning. They didn't have their coffee in the morning. Think about if everyone today in the business world just quit drinking coffee. I'm sure it wouldn't be as good as it wouldn't be as fast. Yeah, it wouldn't be as productive. In the '60s, there was uh, all the New York advertising companies and stuff like that. Speed was their main thing. Doctors would come in and shoot them in the ass with a needle full of speed, and then boom, the office would light up and people would go crazy and people would boom, 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 busting out all this stuff, working out their asses off. All right, think about this, though. Wait, Caleb, you you go. My my thought can wait. All I got to say is, you know, when they, like, first came out with cigarettes and people would have all these illnesses and everything would go wrong, you know, all the doctors, they would say, smoke a cigarette, it'll go away, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Smoke a cigarette. Yeah. That's pseudoscience. Yeah, smoke a cigarette, it'll go away. You know, they come to find out years and years later, it's actually killing you. Yeah. Yeah, so with that, imagine what will happen 20 years down from life from now with... Number one, nicotine, where everyone will be no, from chewing is different out. than vaping is different from smoking. There's no tobacco. There's no chemical per se. We don't know. There's no harmful chemicals per se in vape. But 20 years from now, they're going to have the hard science that says what that does to us physically and what that does to us socially. Mm-hmm. And I think another big one that has just popped into the scene and we have no idea what's going to happen and how it will affect us socially and mentally, cell phones. I mean, yeah. You, you yeah. guys have seen The Social Dawn on Netflix? Mm. Uh, what's this documentary where they kind of go into that from what we know now about addictions and social anxieties with the younger generation. Gen Z, we've had it their whole lives and you look at depression and suicide rates in our generation and how that has directly affected us mentally. And so 20 years down from when, it might be like just like how cigarettes, like, oh, today it's good, you know. You're addicted to your phone, you know, keep going on your phone. Not two hours, four hours ago, it doesn't matter. But imagine 20 years down from mine, they're like, well, oh, that's how Gen Z got killed. Yeah. <laughs> that's how they all committed suicide and died. <laughs> think, about, think about this, though. Like, uh, so, like, w- w- would you say that caffeine is bad for you? Well, like, a, it depends. It's a choice. Go it's, All right, go back to the, that business standpoint. Yeah. You, people wouldn't be as productive if they didn't no, have their coffee exactly. or caffeine. And so, like, there's teachers, also people, every teacher, there's also like, the people that can, you know, work without it. Yeah, but like, don't uh, need it. what I'm saying is, like, some some addictions are necessary. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. They're like, not even necessary; they're just part of life. Exactly, they're part of everyday well, life like, in society. Think, okay, there's so a, so say like caffeine got cut out of all America. Think about how much the business world would like shut down. Stock market, everything would decrease. Everything would decrease. So like, we we can't have that. Like. Like, we, we need our economy. We America, need the that, that's America's power right the there. System. The thing is, people, the people that can thrive without it, you know, obviously they're not going to care or whatever. It's yeah. cool for them. They don't need yeah. it. But, like, the people that, you know, do need it, like, I'm not saying it's like a bad thing, but the people that do need it, and, like, if this all goes away, everything is just going to come to a downfall. Yeah, statistically. The economy is just going to crash. I mean, even every teacher I've had 
drink coffee. Always drinking coffee. Yeah, yeah, number one teacher month. And imagine if every teacher quit drinking coffee, our education system would suffer, and the next generation of youth would be not as smart because they didn't have caffeine. It's crazy. So would you almost say, like, caffeine, like, could benefit people in a way? It does. It does. It definitely Just make, does. makes them more productive. I mean, statistically, most people drink caffeine, and they're better people for it. But we have decided to get... You know, screwed up on caffeine, <laughs> and <laughs> we call it? every people don't do this every day. This no. is not a main staple part of life. So yeah, I, I, I don't I don't drink uh, caffeine. I want to say you know I don't drink it. I, I choose not to. Yeah. I can I can function without it, but you definitely do see you know, side effects of it. Yeah, and people don't do this on a regular basis. So I think with they drugs yeah. in a perfect society, like hundred years from now, and we got all this stuff figured out. Scientifically, I think we could enhance our society if we use drugs in a positive standpoint. Because, I mean, I, I believe in God. And, you know, mm-hmm. everything happens for a reason. Sure. Why did he give us drugs? I mean, maybe that's why. Maybe there's a meaning to it we haven't found. That's what I'm trying to say. This podcast. Yeah, I, that's Imagine. a good thing to think about, actually. Yeah. Just wait it there. You, you, think, you think we'll ever find that meaning or no? 